We finally have a resolution to the dispute between the Winnipeg Jets and the Dustin Bufflin situation. We also have a few rumors today regarding the Leafs and the Sens. We have some more information on Bill Peters hiring over in the KHL, as well as a potential update here for the upcoming salary cap for the next NHL season. We'll get into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of news topics to cover today, and let's kick things off with the Winnipeg Jets and the Dustin Bufflin situation finally getting resolved. Of course, Dustin Bufflin did not play at all this year. He was suspended after failing to report to training camp. Uh, he did arrive in Winnipeg uh, shortly before camp begun. He was seen skating, uh, but apparently was having some issues with an injured ankle, and there was a bit of a dispute. It seemed to be, at least from a medical standpoint, what many believed it to be, between the player and the team uh, resulted in a standoff here for some time. Now, we did have reports quite some time ago indicating that they were going to be coming to a contract termination. They were going through the negotiation process process of that and uh, it took it a long time obviously to get to this point where they can officially announce it and say that it's been resolved so the Winnipeg Jets put out a statement earlier on Twitter confirming this that it's actually been completed and we did get a further update as well from uh, TSN reporter Frank Saravelli confirming that Bufflin will not be getting paid uh, any of the remaining money on the contract that he's foregoing about 14 million dollars so this clearly was not about money for Dustin Bufflin he's left a lot of money here on the table in order to get this contract terminated so that does make Bufflin an unrestricted free agent and it gives Winnipeg Jets some much needed salary cap relief obviously they've been up against the cap had a really hard tough season with all the changes to their blue line uh, they had to make several moves in the offseason like trading Jacob Truba they lost Tyler Myers to free agency they lost Ben Sherratt to free agency and then having uh, Buffalo not come to play that was a really drastically different looking blue line and they certainly had their ups and downs for the most part of the season and really couldn't do a lot about replacing Bufflin uh, in the lineup with another you know heavier contract because they didn't really know what the outcome was going to be on this situation so it kind of handcuffed them from making other moves uh, and clearly this is finally the solution that they were looking for although I think they would rather have Dustin Bufflin playing for the Winnipeg Jets would be the preferred outcome I know I saw comments from Kevin Chevalier the GM of the Jets indicating that that was not really what they wanted. They would have preferred, obviously, the Buffalo come back to play, but clearly that's not what he wanted, and uh, therefore the contract is terminated. Like I said, he's a free agent. He leaves a bunch of money on the table, and uh, we'll see what the next chapter holds. I mean, I personally would have uh, a lot of doubts that Dustin Bufflin ever plays in the NHL again. We even heard on Hockey Central at noon today on Sportsnet, they had a quick interview with Christopher Stieg, where he even said a former teammate who knows him quite well that he would be shocked if Buffalo never played again. And I would concur with those sentiments. I mean, it's been a long layoff for Buff already, depending on how this NHL season pause lasts and the return of hockey and all those things that we're waiting to get clarification on and all the uncertainties. Uh, even if he wanted to play, it's going to be a long stretch. He's a big man. He's not a you know a spring chicken anymore. I, I really just don't see it happening. But I guess you never say never, and we'll see if there's uh, any interest on his part to play and if another team has the interest to sign him to another contract, likely would be a short-term one if he ever did make that return back to the NHL. But this solution is now considered resolved, and they can both move on respectively here. Now, speaking of situations that have a lot of uncertainty around it, there's been some reports as well regarding the salary cap for next year. Now, I saw this report earlier from Andy Strickland on Twitter uh, indicating that uh, a high-profile player agent has informed him uh, that the NHL has advised the, uh, the players that they would be remaining a flat salary cap for the upcoming season. I know there's been some other NHL insiders that have hopped on to kind of say that that's not a done deal as of yet, but it is a possibility. Uh, and it's also been talked about that they could have a flat cap for a number of years. So they might have to come to an agree on that rather than do like a rollback and drop the cap, which really, if you think about all the lost revenue, it would make sense that the salary cap would go down. But instead of it going down, they just agree that it won't go up for, I'm not sure exactly how many years it would be, but instead of getting those increases that we were expecting, uh, gradually here over the next one or two years, and then a bigger jump when that US TV deal kicked in, it may take longer to get those increases because of all the money they're losing. 
by being on pause here right now. And if they have to have the playoffs without fans in attendance, clearly that is going to cost them a fair bit of chunk of change as well. So obviously we'll see what happens. But if there's a flat salary cap for a number of years, a lot of these teams that are up against the cap that have a lot of you know people on their team that work for the cap, like within the GM's office, they could kind of like consider capologists. And they would have been forecasting a certain number of increases in the cap amount over the next number of years as they do all these contracts. And there's going to really be some teams that are going to be in bad shape and have to make some unexpected drastic moves. Of course, like I said before, we don't know if they'll offer any compliance buyouts or how they're going to handle any of those situations. But a couple of teams that have some talk about them regarding cap space would be the Leafs and the Senators, both on very opposite ends of the equation here. A recent article in The Athletic written by James Myrtle and Jonas Siegel uh, discussing the likelihood that Tyson Berry and Cody Ceci both are really as good as gone from the Maple Leafs when the offseason officially kicks in. Uh, neither one of them have really been overly impressive in their one season in Toronto. Both failed experiments uh, and the blue line for the Maple Leafs will look quite a bit different for the upcoming season. Uh, and obviously they're going to have to likely make a trade is what they feel in this article. And we've discussed recently as well that there's other reporters out there talking about what we may see when the offseason finally kicks in. That the Leafs would be basically forced to either trade Kapanen, Kerfoot, Janssen, or a combination thereof, maybe with other prospects or other things involved to uh, land you know, a top defenseman, a uh, top four for sure, ideally top two. And obviously, you know, that's going to be something they're going to have to do. If they're going to have a flat cap for a number of years, possibly, and have all that money committed to those big four players without moving one of the big four, which I know they likely would not want to do, and then it's going to be a lot of those middle-tier guys that are going to unfortunately take the hit and be victims of the cap and see themselves shipped out of town here. Now, one team for me that comes to mind when it comes to looking at the Leafs maybe making a trade uh, for a defenseman might be the Anaheim Ducks. I know it's a player we talked about before uh, earlier in the season, near the deadline when we're a lot of talk about what the Leafs might do. I can't help but wonder, especially after looking at some Sportsnet articles that we've discussed in the recent videos here, talking about some trade rumors, that the Ducks might be a team that might go deeper into a full rebuild than we might think right now. And that maybe they would make a guy like Josh Manson available via trade if they can bring in some scoring forwards like a Casper Kapanen or maybe a package thereof uh, to kind of give their forward uh, group some younger infusion here of some offensive guys who can help them on that end of the ice. I mean, I know at the same time, though, the Ducks really have traded a lot of defensemen in recent years uh, that they've, uh, you know, because they had so many good young prospect D as they developed, of course, they moved a lot of them along. They've lost guys like Shea Theodore. They moved along guys like Brandon Montour, uh, you know, just to name a couple. They still have Fowler, Lindholm, um, as well as Manson, and Manson could be the guy that the Leafs probably would be the most interested in if they were to go down that road. That's just me, you know, thinking about hypothetically who might be out there. I know there's been talk before, but maybe a Matt Dumba in Minnesota, but, you know, looking at things now, maybe Minnesota doesn't make that move. It's hard to say. Uh, they have a little bit more likely reason to keep Dumba. Just looking at some defensemen who would be on the market that might make sense for them to consider, but really out of all of them, I think Manson would be an excellent fit if they could pry him away from Anaheim. But like I said, that's just for me thinking that Anaheim with everything where they're at, might make more sense for Bob Murray to take that team into a deeper rebuild. And might be willing to trade some of those more established players to get something a little bit more for the future here. So I guess we'll see what happens in Toronto. But according to the article, which I certainly concur with, Barry and CC are as good as gone when the offseason officially kicks in. Now, as far as the Senators go, like I said, they're on the opposite end of the equation here with all kinds of cap space. They're already going through a rebuild, uh, and they're in a very, very different situation, uh, both financially as well as competitively on the ice. Now, of course, there's an article that I want to reference from NBC Sports indicating how they could weaponize their cap space to kind of take advantage of cash trap teams that are up against it and need to move contracts in order to get some other future pieces, younger players, more established pieces even, uh, to help them kind of accelerate this rebuild, maybe take a chance on some other players that teams are kind of losing patience with that they need to cut bait from. Uh, and obviously, you know, they have all kinds of draft picks as well that they could package up and maybe even, you know, uh, get uh, more higher picks in the next couple of drafts or something. Either way, they have so much to their advantage right now between all these picks that they've gathered, all these prospects that are looking pretty decent but are not all going to be able to play in Ottawa in the cap space they have. They could probably take on a bad contract or two uh, to make sure that they're spending enough 
enough to get to the salary floor even, while at the same time getting the sweeteners to go with it to make that happen. So the Senators are another team I expect who can be very, very busy uh, this offseason. Once we know more about the salary cap, where exactly it's going to be, once we know when the offseason is going to be, I'd expect them to be a team that a lot of teams are going to be going to, uh, trying to see what they can work out, to see how the Senators can help them, and in return, how they can help them back in return. So I guess we'll see what happens, but it's certainly a team to keep your eye on once we finally have an official offseason. Now, the lastly here I want to touch on Bill Peters again. As we reported here in the last couple of days, Bill Peters has been hired again as a head coach, this time over in the KHL. Of course, we all know what happened with Bill Peters in Calgary and uh, that whole situation. I don't need to reiterate that to you again. Uh, obviously, right now, though, the thing that I found interesting is that the team in the KHL that he is going to be the head coach for. It's been rumored that, of course, former Red Wing Pavel Datsuk played for that team and that he was very influential in getting him the opportunity there. Of course, uh, Pavel Datsuk would have known him from the Red Wings uh, and obviously didn't have an issue with him if he's helping him get a job over there. But one player who's might be on his way out of that team is Nigel Dawes. Now, in case you're not familiar, Nigel Dawes, of course, did play in the NHL, never really found you know a long-term home, didn't have a ton of success. He had a pretty solid career in junior before, when he, before working his way up to the NHL. But over in Russia in the KHL, he's been an absolute stud, been one of the top players, uh, you know, for a long time and has a ton of success, been team captain for that team that uh, Peters is going to be coaching. Uh, he's been their leading scorer, uh, had so much success with that group. But he's also a pending free agent. And there was reports here that I'll show you from Twitter indicating that some people have information to suggest he's not going to stay now because of the Bill Peters situation. And I'm not sure I know how much we can back that up. That obviously comes from Rear Admiral, who's RA from the Spit and Chicklets podcast. I'm not sure what kind of insiders he's got access to but at the same time that was one of the first things that came to mind anyways is would Nigel Dawes stay clearly with Nigel Dawes and his ethnic background uh, being Jamaican Canadian clearly you know I couldn't help but wonder if he would have issues with a guy like Peters and I guess we'll see for sure because the KHL free agency period will be kicking in here soon in a couple of weeks and we'll see if one of their all-time greats over there uh, and one of their top scorers team captain leaves the team on account of of the coach being hired. Would not be shocked if it did, but I guess we'll have to wait and see for sure how everything shakes out. But Bill Peters might be, again, paying for the price here for his previous mistakes that he lost his job in Calgary for. So let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed here today down in the comments so we can continue the conversation. Again, I just want to thank everybody who's been a membership of the channel. I just want to thank you for your support, and I will catch you next time. Music.